Welcome to this lecture about the issue of the life of Jesus compared to Muhammad. Dear friends, I'm very excited to teach and discuss with you about how to witness effectively as a Christian to our Muslim friends. My name is Andreas Maurer. Please visit our website for more information. Now let us look at this comparison of the concept of the life of Jesus compared to Muhammad. Sometimes while speaking with Muslims, I sense their pride to emphasize that they know better about doctrinal issues than Christians. They assert that the life of their prophet Muhammad is far superior to the life of Jesus. However, we can ask questions such as, what evidence do they have? Is the lifestyle of Muhammad really superior to that of Jesus? What exactly does the Quran teach? What references do they have? How can Christians explain this comparison to Muslims? I would encourage Christians to carefully study the biblical doctrine. I also have additional information on this topic in my book, Ask Your Muslim Friend. It is in section 2.31 and 2.35. It is important that Christians first need to have a clear understanding on this teaching before explaining this to Muslim people. An argument I often heard from Muslims goes like this. Muhammad is the final prophet of Allah and his life is of much nobler character than that of Jesus. Muhammad is believed by Muslims to be the seal of the prophets of Allah to guide humanity to the right way. The Quran uses the designation Katam an Nabiin, which means the seal of the prophets, beginning with Adam. This title is generally regarded by Muslim as meaning that Muhammad is the last and greatest of all prophets sent by Allah. On the other hand, many Muslims are also aware that Christians have the highest esteem for Jesus and even worship him. This is strange to them and they think that Christians have committed idolatry. In Islam, as stated above, Muhammad is the final and greatest prophet of all and of much nobler character than any other prophet, including Jesus. Muslims often idealize Muhammad by ascribing things to him which he never did or said out of the desire to lift Muhammad higher than he really is. However, this attitude is closer to wishful thinking than to reality. Therefore, it is important for Christians to listen carefully to statements made by Muslims and ask them kindly for evidence to support such claims. As stated in section 2.3.1 of my book Ask Your Christian Friend, Jesus is portrayed as superior to everyone else even in the Quran, including Muhammad. The following 10 points illustrate striking comparison between the life of Jesus and of Muhammad. Firstly, we speak about the topic marriage. God's concept of marriage is described in the creation narrative in the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2. Jesus confirms this law that marriage is between one man and one woman. Jesus himself was celibate. 
On the other hand, Muhammad, as a model to all Muslims, had many wives. The Quran allows every Muslim man to have up to four wives. In Surah chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Marry woman of your choice, two or three or four. That one Muslim man can have more than one wife is not an easy issue and has caused often many problems. Muslim men have confirmed to me that it is practically impossible to treat each wife the same way. One Muslim friend related the following story to me. He grew up in a home where his father had two wives. His first wife lived on the first floor and had three children, and his second wife lived on the second floor and had two children. His father was one day with his first wife and the next day with his second wife and their children. My Muslim friend told me that he was one of the children of the second wife on the second floor. He also revealed to me that there was almost constant fights, problems, jealousy between the two wives. The fighting was also between the children of the first and the second wife. Because of this bad experience during his childhood, he vowed to himself to have only one wife. Since there are too many problems to have more than one wife and it will make life only miserable. Secondly, let us compare Jesus and Muhammad's authority to forgive sins. In the Bible, we discover that Jesus had the power and authority to forgive people's sins. Please, allow me to share the following amazing story with you from the Bible in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and said to them, why are you thinking like this? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But I want to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. These amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Dear friends, in this story, we have clear evidence that Jesus has the power and authority not only to physically heal people, but above all, forgive the sins of people. In the Quran, however, there is no claim that Muhammad ever forgave people's sin in the name of Allah. Thirdly, how do Jesus and Muhammad view the future kingdom? 
As we look at the Bible, it becomes clear that Jesus proclaimed a spiritual kingdom based on truth, love, peace with God, joy, self-denial, and a life devoted to God. In Islamic history, however, we discover that the treaty which Muhammad made with the leaders of Medina during the year 622 was the foundation of his future political and basis for the military expansion of his empire. Thus, the future Islamic kingdom is seen as an earthly kingdom when the whole territory of the whole world is conquered for Islam. Point four. How do Jesus and Muhammad view the concept of peace? Jesus defined peace as a spiritual matter. Those who follow have peace in their hearts with God. Please study the following biblical references in Matthew 11, John 14, 16 and Romans 14. As an example, let me quote from John 16 verses 33, where Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. On the other hand, Muhammad was an army leader and conquered new land for his people. Today, it is the aim of radical Muslims to conquer and possess the whole world and enforce Islamic law in order to establish Islamic peace through the Sharia in every country. Point 5. What are the differences about self-interest and power of Jesus compared to Muhammad? Jesus was aware of his mission and was obedient to his Father in heaven. Though Jesus knew that he would die on the cross in Jerusalem, he did not flee out of self-interest, but went willingly to Jerusalem to die as a sacrifice for all who believe in him and thus fulfill his role as the Savior of the world. Looking at Muhammad's life, we note that he emigrated from Mecca to Medina in the year 622. He was persecuted beforehand by his own people in Mecca and he chose to go where his personal security was granted. In Medina, he established an army and grew rapidly in power and wealth. Point six. What about forgiveness? How did Jesus, respectively Muhammad, advise their followers concerning forgiving others? Jesus ordered his followers to forgive others willingly and unconditionally, even their enemies. On the other hand, Muhammad practiced the law of blood revenge, which means eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. There is no unconditional forgiveness in Islam. Point seven. What about the successor of Jesus and Muhammad? Did Jesus or Muhammad appoint a successor? When we look at the Bible, we discover that Jesus announced that after his death, the Holy Spirit would come and guide all his disciples. We read this in John chapters 14, 15 and 16. Jesus appointed the Holy Spirit as his successor. On the other hand, since Muhammad did not appoint a successor, after he died, his followers quarreled over 
who would be the future leader. Sony believes in Abu Bakr and Shiite in Ali as being the first caliph or successor of Muhammad. Since then and up to this day, Sunnis and Shiites are at war with each other about this issue. Point 8. What do we know about the death of Jesus and Muhammad? We know that Jesus died on the cross around the age of 34. It was a very painful death. But Jesus endured this torture in order to fulfill his mission. We read in Matthew 27 verse 26 about Pilate's order. But he had Jesus flocked and handed him over to be crucified. On the other hand, Muhammad died around the age of 62. The cause of his death is not clear. There are various theories such as that he was poisoned by his enemies, he was murdered while praying in the mosque by some enemies, or he was wounded in battle and as a consequence he died. Or Muhammad's death is a mixture of what just has been said. Let us go to point 9. What are the attitudes of Jesus and Muhammad towards their enemies? Jesus' main emphasis is love in any encounter with people. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 he says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In the Quran, however, in chapter 8, verse 39, it is recorded that Muhammad said, And fight to them on until there is no more turmoil or oppression, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah. Point 10. What are the attitudes of Jesus and Muhammad? towards women. Looking at the life and ministry of Jesus, it becomes clear that his attitude was as follows. Jesus views men and women as equal before God. Women are as valuable and are as important as men at home and in public life. He never harmed or enslaved women. On the other hand, if we examine the life and the action of Muhammad, we observe the following. Women are generally seen as only half worth than men. Women are to stay quietly at home. He encouraged his men to rape enslaved women. And Muhammad had many wives and kept six slaves. For further studies and reference concerning this topic, please also read in my book Ask Your Muslim Friend, section 1.7.3. In sum, we can say that there are some similarities between the life of Jesus compared to Muhammad, such as both are the founders of faith. Both have many followers and made an impact on many lives. And thirdly, their teachings and lives are recorded in a book, the Bible respectively in the Quran, which is referred from each faith and their followers as their holy book. However, there are also major differences as laid out in this lecture. Therefore, having looked at all these points, I am convinced that the life of Jesus is of much nobler character than that of Muhammad. What about you? What is your opinion? 
What do you think about what has been said on this topic? I personally believe that the Christian faith is the true faith. I'm also convinced that Jesus is the truth and the Savior of this world. Thus, the Bible is the Word of God. The biblical teaching gives clear answers about Jesus. A book which I recommend you to purchase and study is the book I have written and already mentioned with the title Ask Your Muslim Friend. This book has three main parts. First, Islamic teaching. Then, secondly, Christian answers to Muslim objections. And thirdly, encounters with Muslims, where there are many practical guidelines. In addition, I also recommend the booklet Illustration Parable Stories. This booklet contains many practical stories showing the difference in Christianity and Islam. These literatures are available in many different languages. We strongly encourage you to subscribe to our lectures and acquire our literature. In addition, I like to recommend that you consult different Christian and Islamic websites. See you soon again. Good day and God bless you.